Welcome to Shorty Super Coach. Today we're going to do something a little bit different from these profiles. I thought it'd be good to sort of break it up from the player profiles and just a bit of general discussion really. I know it's an absolute mile away in terms of finalising positions but I must say and I'm sure you guys have been similar that when doing team planners and having a little bit of a look at how things might line up the ruck division is proving very very difficult. Now Often when we do these early forecasts, sometimes, you know, we say there's no rookies or there's nothing here or there and things unfold and things happen through the pre-season and, and all of a sudden those are questions that become answered. But it doesn't always work like that. And I think the ruck division is often where there's the least amount of movement because there's not as many guys we actually have to pick from. So it does limit our options. And at this early stage, the rucks really look to be a tough call and a really important call. Now, there's a lot of ways you can go with it. And as I said, I haven't finalized on anyone. I mean, how could you? We're miles out. I haven't even really done many team planners. I've just sort of looked at a few players' prices and worked out a few potential things that could look like my side. But at this point, I thought, yeah, I think if I'm thinking about it, then a lot of other people are too. So I wanted to take a bit of a discussion about this ruck situation. Now, clearly off the top, Gorn and Grundy. They go hand in hand, absolutely dominant last year. Did so many coaches, so many favours. They were outstanding. And that was all well and good last year. But it was always going to leave us in a little bit of a pickle for this year coming. Now, if you're going to get both of them, that's 1.4 million. You've got Grundy at 708k and Gorn at 692k. The reason I think it's difficult to pick these rucks is because I know myself, I'm extremely hesitant to spend that much money on anyone, but particularly rucks and two of them. I think it's very, very bold to go with both, but I'll just explore a couple of options. I don't have any bias towards any angle at this point. I just want to generally discuss. Now, I think when we are looking at the rucks, it's so hard to say who is going to be the number one ruck the next year. They prove to be flimsy year on, year out. Sometimes they are guys that repeat it and go really well. But often we see players up and down with big changes in their averages. I mean, just off the top of my head, you know, uh, Sam Jacobs, Ivan Maric came from nowhere. Uh, Todd Goldstein went boom and then, you know, 128, I think he averaged. And then he was sort of back to the pack. I think um, Steph Martin came out of nowhere back in his day. And, and you could argue the same for Brody Grundy. I mean, I was a big rap for him last year. But even he went from 97 to 130. I mean, that's enormous. The reason I'm saying this is they are very, very hard to bank on. History says that. Now, midfielders, you know, I think most years we can say with a fair bit of assurity, take this year, for example, you know, Tom Mitchell, he's going to be a gun again. Paddy Cripps, he's going to be a gun again. Clayton Oliver. It's hard to see him being anything less than 110. Paddy Dangerfield, he's a forward as well now, but you can lock him in for going big time. You know, there's reliable guys that we can bank on very, very confidently because we've seen in years gone by, we've seen midfielders go 110 plus, the very best players go 110 plus year on year on year. Where the rucks, we have seen consistently different top three to four ruckmen particularly different top two ruckmen. We've seen a lot of different number one rucks come year's end. There's often some surprises. They often prove to be more injury prone. They can be affected by other players far more easily. You know, another midfielder comes into the engine room. It's not really going to affect Fifey too much. Another player comes to the ruck division, starts sharing that ruck time. All of a sudden, that has a real impact on them. So from the top... I would say it would be difficult to pick both. The counter argument to that is that at the end of the day, you want to, at the end of the year, have the top two ruckmen in the competition. You want to have the top six to eight defenders and forwards and your top eight mids to be in the top eight to 12, ideally, you know, in a perfect world. And potentially, 
even though you'd be spending 1.4 mil, perhaps the ruck division is the most obvious to actually say, yeah, these guys are going to be the number two rucks, the top two rucks. So it is very interesting, that counter-argument, and I have read some people saying that, that, you know, I'm prepared to pay the big bucks because they'll be bloody hard to get through the season, and I know they're going to be the top two or three ruck, you know, more than likely the top two. So very interesting counter-argument. I want to just have a look at perhaps a couple of other options. Now, Steph Martin is a favourite of mine. He's really been very, very solid for quite a number of years now. And I think he has shown and proven himself to be very reliable. Average 105.7 last year. He's been over 110 before. He is 32 but he is just an absolute workhorse and continues to show the ruck load for the Brisbane Lions. Having said that, his previous two years to the 105 were 98 and 89, and then there were those 110 and 111. So you could argue that his numbers probably not going up. If anything, best case scenario, we could hope for a 106, 107, 108 sort of deal. But I really do like him. There's no real signs of a Brisbane Lion player coming up from nowhere to steal that mantle or share a significant amount of the load. But things can change for the preseason. So he's perhaps a guy that you might look at. And, and of course, he's not going to average Brody Grundy numbers from last year. But the conversation is that while you might be spending $708,000 dollars on Grundy, you can get Steph Martin for 573. And I'll get into this mid price discussion and stepping stones in a second, but it, it can all be relative. You can use that money elsewhere. All about having that team balance. Todd Goldstein is another guy that you might look at. And again, he's sort of in a similar mold to Martin, is getting on a little bit, but he is a proven performer and while his average isn't unbelievable from last year priced at 548k the last 14 rounds he did average 110.6 got back to some beautifully consistent numbers some numbers that we are you know, pretty familiar with from goldstein just finding enough of the ball winning plenty of hit outs and being really consistent between 100 and 120 most weeks so if you like the back end of Goldstein's season, then he may be a guy that you take a look at. Bruce is gone. I'm not too sure. There's a stack of other players at North who would be putting their hand up. Um, so that might be an option you may look at. Again, that can save you 150 to 170K. And other than that, it really is slim pickings in terms of I'm just going through a few of them here. Ben McAvoy, I don't think you'd touch. Justin Westhoff has provoked a fair bit of interest. Obviously, he had a strange sort of a breakout year in a way. He's been around for so long, averaging 80 to 90 more often than not. And then he pumped it up to, I think it was 101, which was, you know, rarely do we see a player at this age do that. The reason was he got more access to the ruck which gave him more time around the ball and, you know, tackles, contested possessions, the odd hit out. It gave him more opportunity to score, and we saw him do exactly that. I would be very, very hesitant in picking him, because while he is dual position, priced at 549, had a very good season last year, Port Adelaide have players coming back that are going to fill that role that he did. I could not see him replicating that. I would simply see him going back to a fairly stock standard 85 to early 90s average that's in my opinion a couple of other guys you know nan curvis is thereabouts i just don't think he has the ceiling um workman like no doubt sandalands you couldn't trust if your life depended off and then we start to get into you know sinclair and that new belt you know we're not going to go near those guys so really it is quite tiered the ruck you've got those top two who are just poles apart their scoring ability is miles clear albeit you know we've seen it once from grundy and anything can happen with rucks and and gorn i still think is probably the most outstanding ruckman in the competition but Bruce has gone to the d's and you know what what is his effect going to have on that and gorn 
has been injury prone. He is a guy who can get injured quite often and to pay such an amount of money is hugely risky for a guy who can get injured. So these are all things to think about. I'm not trying to push in any one direction. I'll give you a little bit of a feel for exactly where I sort of stand at the minute, but I'm certainly still assessing it myself. Um, if we go through a couple of other things, you know, Matty Cruz is a real interesting one. You know, I do like Cruiser, but again, he's so injury prone. He's priced at 432. If he has a good preseason, I wouldn't say he's the worst selection in the world. You'd be ballsy, no doubt about it, but he has shown an ability to really score well. His body's not going to hold up for a whole season. Now, you would imagine he's a stepping stone sort of a guy. Because if there's one thing we know, there's been a lot of maybes and unknowns throughout this video, but there's one thing we know, Grundy and Gorn, their price is going to go down. And there are those people who say, I don't give a stuff, Shorty. I'm going to get them from the start, and I'm going to put my feet up, and I'm not going to have to touch my Ruckman for the whole year. It's going to be nice and easy while you have a headache trying to find the perfect round and the right amount of money and the right stage to trade this guy in, and you're hoping he's scores 85 doesn't make his break even all this sort of crap we're having a headache but old mate's got them both already all relative but the one thing is their price will go down hence the stepping stone option to potentially go a guy who's 350 to 450k wait say five to seven rounds grundy and gorn one of them will go down they'll both go down perhaps you go with one hope the other goes down a bit your other guy has got a bit of value He's reliable. He's done it before like a cruiser. You think he probably won't last the season. Again, you take a bit of a risk, he might go down in round three. So could anyone. But that is the potential where your guy goes up 100k, Grundy goes down 100k. All of a sudden, you have saved yourself some money, but you probably haven't lost too much out on the points per game scenario. So that's food for thought. Um... Who else have we got here? Sean Darcy, I really like. I really do like. And at some point, number one ruck mantle will be his. But I couldn't see us going with him just yet. That would be pretty bold. Shane Mumford is a guy that a lot of people are talking about. 320k. He's been suspended for the first two rounds, given his drug. Um, well, a bit of fun with the uh, drugs there. But I couldn't see us going with him for that mere fact. Yeah, look, A... He's missing the first two games. So there's a massive halt on you already. You're going to be looking for your R3 to be playing and he's probably not going to score well. It hurts you straight off the bat. And B, I know they say he's stayed fit and he's been boxing and he looks a million dollars, but he hasn't played AFL footy for quite a while. I can't see him coming back into the fold and just you know, churning out 100 scores like he used to. I don't see it happening. I think it's just far too risky. Um... Bit of talk about Sam Naismith, you know, cheap, number one ruck, you know, can we can we be tempted? That's really one where you, you're just looking for a, probably an 80 average or something like that to to work his way up. Um, there's probably not too many other guys even worth considering, to be honest. Let me scroll through a bit. You know, Zach Clark is a guy at the Bombers, but... You know, he's 162, 142K. Had some good time in the waffle, but again, he's going to be vying up against Bell Chambers. He's not going to be the number one rock. Uh, Darcy Fort's a guy that Geelong picked up, mature age. He's had some great numbers, but again, Geelong have always been shuffling their rucks, and, and I'm not sure whether he's going to get a spot there, you know, Abbott and Stanley, and, and we've got quite a number of guys, Radigalia's rucked at times, shared the load, so again, I'm not sure, that's probably one to unravel through the pre-season, so there are a few guys to think about. Overall philosophy, I touched on the fact that you could lock them both in and have a cruisy little season and be pretty confident that both of those guys will have great seasons again, play plenty of footy, and you'll be laughing. The cons to that is, you know, they will absolutely go down in value and could get injured. And anyone could get injured, I know, but Ruckman have shown that they are far more prone to injury. So you've got to factor that in a little bit more. And to spend so much money on two guys in your ruck department, which historically we don't spend that much in, 
could really smack your team balance around. But hey, it's an option to start them both. I think a lot of people at the moment are saying, you've got to have one of them. You've got to have one. And a lot of people at the moment are saying, look, Bruce, oh my God, Bruce is going to take points off uh, Gorn, so we're going to go Grundy. Um, so a lot of people are going with one. And then that leaves the little awkward one of who else do we go? And if I'm advising people in one direction right now, which you know, I'm not really set on anything, but I would be saying you have to have one of them. I mean, you've really got to consider both. I couldn't see myself going both just because it is such a massive amount of coin and they do come up with their own amount of risk. It's different to picking a Gary Ablett or a Dangerfield or something at that price, Tommy Mitchell. It's different. A bit more risk with the rucks. But again, it could be just as crazy to not go with either of them. I think you've got to have one. So say we go with Grundy. The question is, where do you go next? And, and if you go with a Steph Martin or a Goldstein, you know, like I said off the top, I think you'll have a solid season with them. The The cons to that is that you'll probably lose out 10 to 15 points per game every week. And um, the fact is that they're sort of a second tier ruck. They're very good rucks, but as I said, top tiers, Gorn and Grundy, if they're averaging 120 plus, outstanding. You probably look at Goldstein and, and um, Martin. You're probably looking at anywhere from, you know, your 102 to 108, maybe 110. But you're still losing out each week. Now, that could be costly. I know it's only minor, but if you do that over a number of positions and you're losing 50, 60 points each week to your mate, you know, you're losing quite a few ranking points week on week. So the reason... I would be thinking at this early stage that if one arises, and we'll be hoping they do, a stepping stone option, I think, would be ideal. Just because I think, you know, Goldstein or a Martin, it's, it's, it's a nice pick, it's a solid pick. You know, they're going to average high 90s, early 100s, maybe if they have another great season, even into their 30s, they might nudge 110. Probably not going to rival a Gorn or a Grundy. We're in a perfect world, and I'm not saying make a stepping stone out of nowhere. Only pick one if they are there and genuinely a good option. I think sometimes you see people, they go, I want a mid-pricer, I want to pick a guy at 350, 360k, he'll go up in value and I'll get this fella when he comes down. And they try and sort of fabricate this thing to be a good idea and it's just not a good idea they want it to happen but realistically there's just no good option in that bracket and you've got to bite the bullet so at this point in time there's probably no one saying yep i'm definitely a mid price of an option i'm gonna bounce back that's pretty clear pick me you know as i said darcy cruiser a um, couple other blokes sort of floating around there potentially could be good options monitor them at this stage because i think in a perfect world it would be great to pick up a guy around 400k he's made the number one ruck spot his own he's going to consistently get your 85s 95s the odd hundred and he's going to work his way up he's going to be steady so you're not going to have this fella like i remember having um, Bell Chambers and, and Lewenberger back in the day, sort of mid-price. And they're just scoring 60s and 50s and 75s, and you're just pulling your hair out. You're pulling your hair out because they're going nowhere. And if you bugger that sort of a selection up in the midfield, then there's plenty of ways to go. You go, oh, look, I got that wrong, but this mid-price is going all right. I'll jump on him. Well, this rookie's on fire. Get him on the bubble. The Rucks... There's genuinely not that much happening. You might not even have a rookie coming up on the bubble for some time. There might not be many rookies playing early on. You can be stuck with a guy. That's the real risk. With, as I said off the top, a lack of options in the ruck department can leave you wanting. So you really want to make sure you get it right. So as I said, unless it's there, you know, don't try and talk yourself into something being a good thing. But if it does unveil itself and there is a guy if cruiser starts to fly or, or someone like that really puts their hand up then we could say yep lock him in he's 425 i'm gonna go grundy and i'm gonna go him but i know that at some stage i'm going to want my ruck department to be gorn and grundy it's just about when and at some stage in the first six to ten rounds 
you know, it's going to work out that a, a good time will happen for you to make that transaction. You know, he makes a bit of coin, Gorn or Grundy drop in price, and you can make that exchange. And that's where you've had a win because you will have saved 200k or something like that because you've you've made 100k from one fella, albeit saving probably 250 odd k by not getting the fella Grundy off the top or who might it be. And then he goes down, he goes up. You guys know the drill. It all works out nice and dandy. But it's all a lot of things we've got to consider because that is where you do have that bit of a headache where aligning all this when you're trying to do lots of other trades and there's guys on the bubble and there's guys on the break even. You want to get him in. He's flying. Oh, God, I'll miss him. Then he's done. It is difficult to try and get it all working perfectly. So I would... At this point in time, just keep your eyes open for what could happen in that ruck department. I think the most likely thing to happen is people will start one. There will be people who start both, but I, I think most will start one. And they will either go with a, a safe option of a Goldstein and a Martin, just to not lose too much ground, but save 150k. And then there'll be others who are a little bit more daring and like a bit of a risk. They'll go mid-price. They want to save a little bit more coin, spend it elsewhere, take a bit of a punt and hope that it works out and they can go up in price and get to another premium right at the top there when they drop off. So I think that's where most people will land. They'll marry up a Gorn or Grundy with, uh, you know, whether it's Goldstein or Martin, Sean Darcy, Shane Mumford, Matty Cruiser, all these sort of types. I think that's probably how it works out, but it's a long, long way to go. Don't take anything that I've said today too concrete because it is very much guesswork at the minute. We're miles off honing in on our exact rucks, but I just thought it is quite interesting at this stage and it's got me pondering, really looking into it. And I thought there's probably a few others who are having that similar sort of a thought process. So... Let me know what you think in the comments, guys. I know I haven't got back to any comments, but I certainly do read them. I'm, I see them pop up on the email, and um, I appreciate the comments and, and the discussion and, and the input, that's for sure. So, yeah, a bit of a longer one, as we can see, ticking over to the 22-minute mark. Certainly been waffling for a bit, but uh, I hope you've stuck around for a little bit. Even if you haven't stuck around for the whole thing, hopefully you've, you know, listened into five or six minutes that's been helpful to you. So I appreciate the support. Subscribe away if you haven't already. I'll be back with a few player profiles very soon. Cheers.